this is basically going to be a list of resources and checks that uh, you should seek when you're conducting a data science project. Um, so um, we're gonna talk about how to define um, requirements uh, when you're starting to do your data science uh, project, how to, um, how to outline or scoop your data science project, and some of the considerations you wanna have to ensure you have um, um, your project uh, can be reproducible and ready to um, uh, re ready to be reproduced. Oh, sorry, I don't know what I did. Uh, what is it? There it is. Um, yep. And some of the useful Python tools uh, and tips on how to uh, better uh, present your uh, findings uh, and of uh, your data science project. So, yeah, let me go over here. I don't know. Yeah, so a little bit about me. My name is Sara Iris Garcia. I'm originally from Guatemala. My background is in computer science, uh, but I currently work as a data analyst in the UK. Uh, I have worked as a data scientist before, and I can tell you I um, I have made an incredible amount of mistakes <laughs> along the way, and even today. So I can honestly say that I could be seriously the least qualified person to be here <laughs> uh, and to give you any sort of advice on how to do data science. Uh, but given my past uh, and present experience in data science, which uh, by the way is very limited, I, I can tell you what not to do, <laughs> and which is basically a list of every single mistake that I've made, so you don't have to. Uh, I intend to give you like a walkthrough um, to a list of documents and checkings for your data science project. Uh, but uh, not really how to describe any of them, given like the time limitation here. But uh, feel free to do a further research and find the documents and um, uh, the best what um, the, do the documents and the step that better works for you for your specific project. That. Um, Every single data science project is different, so uh, I'm just giving you like uh, some of the things that you should really consider, even uh, no matter what that data science project you're conducting, like the minimum things. And yeah, so um, uh, where is it? So basically, um, we are going to. Uh, talk about the things you should uh, keep in mind um, before you're starting a data science project, during the execution of your data science project, and after you finish it. Um, so in the first step, uh, which is very, very important, um, is how to define the requirements. So um, I can tell you really this is the most important step of your data science project, uh, defining uh, how to define requirements. And this is paramount. This is paramount. And it will, by all means, it will determine uh, the success or the failure of your data science project. So you want to invest time on this and make sure you clearly understand and the, uh, what are you doing and why are you doing it, uh, the, the project, and what are the goals and the objectives of uh, the project and how the deliverers, deliverables you're gonna provide uh, when you finish your project, 
how are they going to impact your organization and how you're going to measure that impact so all like you want to uh, you want to define uh, the metrics you're going to use and as well all if, if you foresee any any sort of um, challenges along the way uh, for example do you have the right data already? Do you need more data to uh, to conduct the project? So this is everything goes in this step, and um, so um, so for this, like I said, there are there are a lot of resources out there. When I was starting this uh, my my data science journey, uh, you will. You you may think okay this is this, this is so obvious you you want to uh, have a clear understanding of uh, the project what are you uh, why are you doing this but it's not so obvious at least it was uh, it was not so obvious for me so at the beginning I was uh, not putting much of attention of on this and never used. Um, like uh, a documentation in this step. And I can tell you this is very important. And if you do this, you're really going to um, save yourself lots of headaches in the future. So for, uh, I, I offer you here, these are not mine. <laughs> I borrowed them from, uh, from the internet. <laughs> But I found these two, specifically these two uh, documents, really good. Uh, the first one here in the left is a project uh, poster template. It's uh, from Atlassian. And what I like about this is that uh, uh, you can see here, it's, very, it's a very simple template, but that's exactly what I, what I like about this. So you can see here, um, what, in a few sentences, you describe what is the problem. Then basically, why are you doing it? And um, how are you going to measure um, or validate your project? It's a very simple template, but um, the more simpler it is, um, I, I believe that the more, um, uh, the more understandable it is. Uh, and also, uh, in, in the right, uh, there is a design doc template as well. This is uh, all the resources. Uh, I, I will give you all the resources in the GitHub, uh, in my GitHub repo, so you can see, uh, you can have a look at uh, of this more in, more in detail. But you can see here in this template, uh, what I like about this document is that uh, you describe all the objectives uh, of of the overall project, and then I, I like uh, what I like about here is that you describe as well uh, the derivable derivables you're gonna provide. So this is very very useful for um, in terms of uh, communicating ahead with with the uh, uh, with the uh, higher managers or the ones that are in charge of of um, of, of the project. So yeah, this is I'm offering you these two um, documents, uh, two templates. But feel free, as I said, feel free of uh, even uh, doing your own. What uh, what I uh, what it really matters is that you document this, the document, uh, the requirements, because trust me, the requirements um, may change in the future. Maybe you're already like 40%, 60% already in the project, and then your boss comes and tells you, hey, um, I also want this thing, or instead of this, let's switch to do this. So uh, make sure you, everything is clear, um, and um, so you don't have to um, uh, you don't have to live this kind of experiences. And better if you um, sign this up, send an email, 
So everything is like uh, written down. Um, so the next step, If, what is, uh, let's see, oh yeah. So yeah, there's, um, a, 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 like I said, there are um, a bunch of resources out there, uh, but I don't want to, uh, because this is intended for beginners when you're really starting your data science uh, a journey, so I don't want to. <laughs> I'm even myself. I am starting, so the, the this is the minimum amount of resources that I think is um, going to uh, be of help. I hope so. Uh, you you will find all these links in the documentation, and the next step um, is uh, how to outline or scoop the project. Uh, so once, basically, once you have understood what are you going to do and why are you doing it, then you want to make sure of uh, outline a plan on uh, how are you going to do it. Um, so this, this doesn't have to be very specific. Uh, it's just like uh, the idea of this step is to formulate a plan or a roadmap uh, to help you stay on track. And because along of in the execution of uh, your project, things may change. So for example, um, you might find that maybe there's another methodology or algorithm more suitable for the project you're uh, trying to solve, or maybe the model that you first uh, plan to to use, uh, you can really implement it uh, for whatever reasons. So it's um, the thing, the, what is important here is that you define all the steps you're gonna do, not really like in the technical, um, in, in, in not, not, not much uh, technical yet, but it is like, uh, you can think about it like a construction plan. Things can uh, change along the way, but if you have, like, uh, if you have already all the plan that you're gonna, um, uh, you're gonna follow, then it's more easy for you to stay on track. So for example, in this step, you wanna describe the deliverables you're gonna, um, provide at the end of your, your project. Then you want to define the milestone, for example, uh, the EDA, um, the implement the baseline model, and so on and so forth. Then describe uh, the timeline for each of the uh, milestones so you keep on track. Um, and then you describe the data as well. Do you have the the data already, what is the data you're gonna uh, use, how are you going to source it if you don't have it, and all of this. And then the resources and tools that you already have and the ones that you will need to complete the project. And also a little bit of the, uh, not too much technical, it's not necessary to be technical, but also uh, it, um, you also want to describe the implementation that you plan to, um, to use. And for this, um, also, I, uh, I have here as well, I borrow this, um, uh, these two templates. What I like about this, uh, these documents is as well the simplicity of this. Um, so for example, in the first one, you can see here that um, this is not really necessarily for every single data science project, but I find it very, very useful for the data science, uh, for the projects that are like medium to big, <laughs> If you have a, if the data, uh, if your project is a small, I don't think you will really need to use this. But I like it because um, this is a stakeholders analysis 
um, documentation. So what I like about this is that um, you can identify in this uh, document, you identify what kind of uh, stakeholders you have, for example. Um, are you going to, uh, does your project going to fulfill, uh, I don't know, one of the goals for the financial department? So you're going to be, uh, you're going to have a, a very close communication with someone from finance. So their language is not technical. So you want to, uh, you want to identify all, 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 all these things. Uh, why? Because uh, you want to um, speak their own language and you want to make sure of understanding, okay, how this person or this team uh, will be involved in the in the project? How are they going to uh, help me or what resources they can provide? All of this you can, and, and very, simply, very simply you can put it here and this will save, save you uh, time as well in the future uh, when you're presenting as well. Um, and also to the right, you also have um, a documentation as well as a template for um, describing the analysis you're gonna, you're, uh, you intend to, um, uh, you intend to conduct during the uh, execution of your project. This is also useful in case you're not the only one uh, working in the data science project. So if you have a team uh, of colleagues, um, this this is gonna make sure that you all keep on track and like the discussions of uh, what sort of analysis you uh, you want to conduct during the during the project are everything organized. So um, as well, uh, all the documentation is in. A, in the GitHub repo, and also uh, a couple of uh, um, documents that you might find helpful for this step on the project. The other thing that is very, very paramount, <laughs> important, very important during uh, how to do your project, uh, your data science project, is ensure the reproducibility of your results. Um, you know, um, uh, well, the, there is a, um, a nature survey in 2016, and it says that uh, around 60% of the biological studies ca can be reproducible by their own people that uh, uh, the ones who made, the, who presented the results. They cannot even... Um, they cannot even present their own experiments. So this is very important. If you, you cannot reproduce your own experiments, why, uh, what important is, uh, is, is your project? It's meaningless, it's, it's trash. Um, so you wanna make sure to uh, pay much of attention on how to reproduce your, your results. Uh, just think about the scenario where you're working on a project then uh, your boss comes and tells you, um, let's, uh, there is a change of, uh, of, um, of, of plannings. So I don't want you to focus on this. Instead of working on this, put a pause and then focus on this other project. So you go ahead, you pause this, and then you work on another project. Then one year, the, your boss is coming, uh, comes and tells you, you remember that project? Yes, I want this for, I don't know, three months from that. And like, if you had already say, you already work in this project 50% along the way. And now one year in the future, you, you wanna make sure of, okay, one year I work on this one year ago. Uh, do you, is this, is it documented? Can you reproduce the results you you did uh, you you produce? Like you, this is going to save you lots of he uh, future headaches. So uh, yeah, invest time on this and really uh, 
for me, it's very um, tedious to um, spend time in documentation and all that. But it's really um, because I don't personally like it. I'm not a fan of working on this. I just found that there are some tools that they can save me time on doing this. And so uh, for that, there are a couple of checks that you want to um, you want to work with. And the the first and foremost, don't do things manually. Do not ever do things manually. Uh, for example, is there? Uh, do you already see in your? I don't know. Maybe you're working with an Excel file, and you can see clearly there is um, a data entry mistake or outliers. So uh, the easiest thing will be you uh, manually edit the Excel file, don't, don't do it. Because that is not reproducible. You want to make sure everything is automat uh, uh, automatic. And for that, um, I don't know if you were here yesterday in the, um, there, there was a workshop with um, great expectations, Bandera and PyTantic. There are uh, very good um, tools that can help you to, um, Ensure the uh, your um, the data uh, the data validation uh, process. So this basically what they do is um, they um, you can ensure there uh, that you go to a, you you define a checks a list of checkings for the data, and uh, yeah this this can also help you to identify further. Um, errors and also um, you want to, this is obvious, <laughs> obviously, I, I, I suppose, you want to make sure of using um, a version control tool, such that uh, there's a lot, uh, the most, uh, I believe we all know about the Git, uh, GitHub, and also um, uh, software environments, uh, Docker is your friend, uh, Cond environments, VirtualM, uh, you name it. There are lots of tools to keep track of the software environment you're currently using. So when things change, like, like your hardware change, then you can still um, reproduce your results if you know the versions of the, uh, the packages you, uh, you were using. And also, there are some um, uh, test automation tools as well. Um, I give you a, a couple, but uh, there are tons of resources in internet. And also, very important, <laughs> the set the seed number as well. Um, uh, yep, set the seed number so you can reproduce your results. And some of useful links. And then some of the, uh, like the best practice uh, for writing documentation. The writing documentation is very, very important. It's very boring for me to do it. But luckily, there are some, um, uh, some tools that can, uh, that can help you to automate this. Uh, uh, one of the tips I can give you, use linters, agree on a uh, style call, uh, use docs doc string to document your functions and document your API as well when you are exposing your model to an API. You can use um, Swagger or Sphinx, uh, but better uh, use fast API. It will help you save lots of time. And some of the useful Python tools as well. I uh, don't have time to discuss any of these, but here are a list. Cookie cutter is basically a template for um, building a structure of a data science project. You can also use MLflow, very, very good to track the experiments. And, and DBC is the uh, data validation, uh, uh, data control. So it's like a GitHub for both for data. Fast API, as I said, very, very fast. Uh, for implementation and 
extremely dash, for example, if you have to make a very quick dashboard to present your results as well. And in terms of presenting your findings, is paramount know your audience. You wanna make sure of speaking your their own language. Uh, it's good as well to present an executive summary. There's a template I give you there. Uh, use bullet points. And uh, for example, there are a couple of, of uh, tips down there. Provide regular updates uh, on the current status of your project. There is, um, there is a guy, I don't remember his name, but uh, uh, I like his tip. What he does is he spends 15 minutes of his time to write f uh, a paragraph that um, his boss can read it in less than five minutes. So in that paragraph, he gives updates of everything he's done in like a week. Uh, so it's very good because, you know, higher managers, then they don't read a lot. So if you can um, uh, use bullet point and just uh, briefly summarize the results and the findings and how they are going to, how they are translating into um, the business uh, case, then you... Uh, um, you you will find yourself that you are um, a, a, you are um, delivering um, a, the the a, you you are presenting the benefits of your project, and in conclusion, uh, a structure from the very beginning be um, be a, very organized from the beginning. Document every stage of your project and uh, briefly reports your finding and progress. Don't put uh, much of attention in the technical things when you're explaining things. It's better to use visual, use uh, workflows, uh, charts of workflows, or whatever visuals, they are your friends. And I didn't put it here, I forgot it, but if you uh, find yourself a good um, subject matter expert that can help you go along the way. And code, code review is uh, as well, like uh, you can have another person to review your code, that's uh, um, the best you can do. And so, yeah, thank you, thank you. And here is uh, the, the GitHub repo for, for all the resources I shared today. Thank you.